Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Paris, I'm the author of the Magi Trilogy, and I also have a lot of pets. Today's video is going to be all about pets that I recommend for writers. Now, I'm kind of biased. I personally think any pet makes a great pet for writers. I have snakes, I have lizards, I have fish, a snail, dogs, a cat. I've had guinea pigs, rabbits, hedgehogs, sugar gliders, chickens, and the list goes on. I've had a lot of different pets. But I'm going to today talk about some of the pets that I think make the best pets for writers because in a stereotypical writer setting we're home a lot we're sitting at our desk on our computer so we have the ability to take care of animals that are higher maintenance but then it's also nice as a writer to have animals that are quiet that allow you to focus and that might just like to sit with you and cuddle all day long. Before I go further, if you're watching this on Friday, April 12th, 2024, you are in luck because the Magi Trilogy eBooks, these books right here online are available for 99 cents a piece today only. Also, my read along leading up to Unbound's publishing or release day on June 12th starts today as well. So hop on over to my Instagram for more information on that. Back to the actual video. A writer with a pet cat on their lap. I mean, that I know we all thought that when I said I'm making a video about good pets for writers. Cats are sweet. I mean, some of them like to get into mischief, but they're a lot more chill than some other animals. Fritz is content to, oh, he's even off the camera right now. He's lounging. Fritz is just content to sit with me on my lap all day. He'll just sit on my lap while I'm writing. He'll sit on my bed. If I have papers spread out, he will conveniently find the notebook that I'm currently using to sit on top of, but he'll just sit and be content to sit. They're quiet, they're not a ton of work, and they can kind of just chill and walk around the house. So cats are a really great pet for writers because we're home all day. They can just be quiet and sit with us and sleep, take a little cat nap. Other than the occasional, you know, 3 a.m. I need treats right now wake up call, they're well behaved and they're fun and pretty darn cute. If you're looking for a pet that, you know, doesn't take up a ton of space, isn't like a ton of hard work, and is just pretty and relaxing, then betta fish are a great pet. I actually have one. I'll flip the camera in a minute. I have one who's on a tank on my desk. His name is Jermiston. He's actually named after a type of magic that's introduced in the ROTM trilogy. So he kind of works as a little marketing tool as well. And he's just sweet. He likes to watch me write. He's funny. They flare their gills when they're challenging you. And he does that periodically throughout the the day when I move stuff near him. So he's kind of funny too, even though he's just a fish. There he is challenging us right now. He does this throughout the day to show us who's boss and you can see his bubble nest in the back. Really the only condition with betas is they are often sold in these little dinky cups and they're, you're often told that they can just be in a small little carrier. That is not true. The more gallons you give them, the better. He is in, I believe he's in a three gallon tank. He's actually kind of a small little beta. Um, he's an adult, but he didn't get too big. But yeah, the more space you give them, the better. So you need to make sure you have space for a bigger tank. And I'm also gonna buy him a new plant soon because I don't know what's going on with it, but yeah, Jermiston, your plant used to look a lot better. But that's Jermiston and I definitely recommend betas for writers. Rabbits are some of the absolute best pets you can get. I stand firmly by that. They love getting in trouble. They love being mischievous. They love running around. You think they're all timid and quiet. No, they love, love to cause trouble. So they're fun and they're chaotic and they're cute and they're sweet and they're quiet. So I often, when we used to have a rabbit, his name was Samson, we called him Sammy. I would just sit on the floor with my laptop and let him free range throughout the room and he would be, you know, getting into trouble, I'd have to pause, get him off of whatever he was getting into, and then he'd be running around, he would come in to check on me. Rabbits also love to cuddle. He'll just sit on my lap if I wanted to. He'll like jump off my lap, run around, come back. Rabbits are a great pet. They are a little more work and you need to have a bigger setup for them, but they are so, so worth it. And they have great personalities. I don't know if you can see it very well, but this photo over my shoulder is my pet rat, Bella. She is the first pet I got. I had her when I was, I believe, nine or so. Rats make great pets. I know I'm probably grossing out a ton of people. I love rats. I don't see them in pet stores as much anymore, at least where I'm currently located. I don't see them available, so maybe you need to get them more so through breeders now, or maybe just some locations have them, or a lot of people have them as feeders for snakes. 
I don't have them for feeders for snakes. I have them as pets. They're great. They're fun. They also, like rabbits, kind of like to get into trouble, but they're not going to be destroying your house. Bella would, I would let her down and she would run everywhere throughout the room once it was rat proofed. Run everywhere, climb up on bookshelves, get into like, get into everything. And then she would come back periodically to check on me and make sure, you know, I was still there. She would sit on my lap for a minute and then run off and do it all over again. So rats are a really great pet as well because similar to rabbits, they can just kind of be with you while you're writing and they can, you know, be entertaining too. They're fun. Again, they're a little more work than like a cat or a fish, but so worth it and they don't live that long which is both a pro and a con it's a con in that you're gonna want your pet to live as long as possible it's always hard when you lose them but it's a pro in that it's a shorter commitment so if you're in a position where you don't know if you can have a ton of pets um, for an extended period of time something like a rat or a hamster might be a good pet for you because they're not a lifelong commitment if you knew me when I was anywhere between the ages of 11 to about 18, then you know I love and adore guinea pigs. I got my first guinea pig butterscotch when I was about 11, then I had Oreo, and then I had s'mores. Yes, they all have their themed names. Guinea pigs are fantastic pets. I will always recommend them. They are unbelievably loving and sweet. They got slapped in the face they're so sweet like rabbits or rats they can free range they're a little more like independent when it comes to play you do need to proof your room first which you know tie up cords make sure they're not chewing on them but then they can kind of just run around and play guinea pigs can't climb so they're really just on that lower level um i have had them jump onto stacks of books that are on the floor but they're they're sweet they're fun and they're like they're gentle too. They also love to cuddle like a cat. You can sit with a guinea pig for hours. I would literally be reading for an hour or two at a time and my guinea pig would just be on my chest sleeping the whole time. Or, you know, getting off of me, walking around on the bed, coming back like rabbits and, um, and rats. They're sweet and they love to play, but they're also very cuddly. Again, they're a little more higher maintenance. And like, actually, I didn't mention this with rats, but like rabbits or even like a betta fish, they do need a bigger area to be in when they're not out and playing but they're so sweet and they're so unbelievably worth it so those are the top five pets i would recommend for writers now again i actually would recommend any pet because if you have the ability to take care of it and give it the love and care it needs you have the space for it you have the money to take care of it then why not get it um my mom and i put it this way we have had pretty much every animal except for gerbils we've had hamsters mice rats guinea pigs um rabbits and we've had multiple different um types of reptiles you know we've had chameleons we've had leopard geckos crested geckos geckos, snakes. We've had so many different animals over the years. So I really think any pet can make a great pet at any time. If you are a writer who's wanting something that's quiet, that's not like a ton of work and hours every day, then a cat, a betta fish, a rabbit, a rat, or a guinea pig is a great consideration. What about you? What pets do you recommend? And I feel like I can't close out of this video without mentioning dogs. The reason I didn't put them on the video is because they can interrupt more so than some of these other animals, you know, with the barking or if they need to go on a walk. We have two cute little dogs, Belle and Fiona, who I absolutely adore. And they both are so sweet and they love to cuddle and stuff, but they do interrupt more often than some of the others. That being said, I love them and would still recommend them. But for the best pets, you know what my list is for writers. Whatever time it is, almost forgot to do my outro. Whatever time it is, morning, evening, or night, have a great day.